Alright, I get it, you want a video on Roderick, but honestly, there's a reason I haven't done a video on him yet. After rereading the books for like the 20th time for these videos, I realized that even though he's portrayed as a mean older brother, unlike the rest of his family, there isn't necessarily anything wrong with him. Sure, he's not a great role model, and he's oftentimes not nice to Greg, but remember, this entire series is from the perspective of Greg, so when we look at the books through that lens, on your first read, it's easy to view Roderick filling the role as an antagonist in Greg's life. But when you read the book from a more neutral perspective and take everyone's actions beyond face value, you begin to realize everyone's oddities, except Roderick. Again, I'm not saying that he's an amazing person or anything like that, but compared to the rest of his family, he's completely normal. Think back to everything Roderick has done bad, and you'll realize how bad these things really were. Most of these things are either simple pranks, big brain maneuvers, or what I'm just gonna call teen things. It sounds dumb, but I don't really know how else to describe it. I mean here, like just 11 pages into the first book, Roderick pulls a prank on Greg, where he wakes Greg up in the middle of the night and tells him he slept through the whole summer, but luckily he woke up in time for the first day of school. So Greg went downstairs and made himself breakfast, until his dad yelled at him for eating Cheerios at 3am. Greg blamed it on Roderick, but when they went to check on him... Yeah, now Frank is probably wondering what's wrong with his son, and is asking himself how much he'd sell on Craigslist. To be fair though, Roderick did get dressed, change Greg's alarm, and close the blinds, but... Mm -mm, no. Slept through the whole summer? Did he think he just went through a whole coma, and then immediately started eating Cheerios? From the perspective of the reader, it may seem like Roderick is a terrible person for getting Greg in trouble, but the way I see it, all he really did was pull a harmless prank, and honestly, if you're falling for this, it's on you bruh. And essentially, this is all Roderick really does. It's dumb, but for the most part, it's harmless fun. Greg will break his best friend's arm and try to get hopes from it, and Roderick will put fake throw up on cars and be treated like a menace to society. And now, I would like to introduce what I like to call Big Brain Maneuvers. Now, some people may just call these things lazy, but that's simply because we aren't as big brain as Roderick. Like Roderick's strategy of lowering people's expectations so low, you can basically impress people by doing nothing. He watched TV all day, and within the 8 hours, all he presumably did was move his underwear off the table. And look at his dad. I honestly don't think I've ever seen Frank so happy. He looks happier here than when Greg won a trophy for his swim team. And with his enormous brain, moving his underwear is essentially the most effort he ever has to put in. Greg and Roderick have to do the dishes together, but Roderick never does them because he is apparently on a schedule and has to go to the bathroom every time the dishes need to be done. Is he obviously lying? Yes. But what do his parents do about it? Nothing. I mean, come on, are you really gonna sit there and tell me if you can make your sibling do the dishes while you go to the bathroom without consequence, you wouldn't do it? Exactly. And, and if you're an only child, then I don't know, just imagine it or something, I guess. In fact, not only does he not have to do anything around the house, he doesn't even have to do his own essays. Instead of doing his own work, he asks his dad dumb questions every 10 minutes for a couple of hours, trying to get his dad to do his essay for him. But first, come on. Where's the space bar? There's no way Frank actually believes Roderick. Frank didn't just help Roderick with his essay, he did the entire thing for him, and got him an A. Like, what? I'd seriously be scared to ask my dad a question like that, let alone every 10 minutes. I'd be sleeping outside that night for something like that. This video isn't even Roderick anymore, let's just make this part 2 to these videos. No, but in all seriousness, Roderick is still a teen. His parents could just tell Roderick, no, do the dishes before you go to the restroom, or do your own essays. But no, I mean, if you're raised with parents who do stuff like this your whole life, then it's hard to blame Roderick. It's not like he enabled himself. Sure, Roderick gets a tattoo, but what do his parents do about it? Again, nothing. If his parents aren't gonna say anything about it, then why stop? Now, the rest of the things I'm gonna bring up that make him bad are just stereotypical stuff teenagers do. And no, this doesn't mean that most teens are even like this, it's just how the book portrays him. But anyways, it's not like any of these things are really terrible. Like how he got in trouble because Manny brought one of Roderick's heavy metal magazines to show and tell. Which I promise Manny did this on purpose. <laughs> But the magazine had an image of a woman in a bikini, and even Greg said that there wasn't much they had worked up over, but Susan got upset over it anyways. 
But seriously, was this bad? It's not like this was even a Sports Illustrated mag or anything. Or, or anything like that. Another big thing people will point out is the party Roderick threw while his parents were gone. Not something you'd want to tell the other moms at your mommy and meet, but if you read the book, then it really wasn't that bad. I mean, it literally lasted three pages. He did lock Greg in a basement during the party, but honestly, I'd say good on Roderick for not letting a middle schooler into a party full of seniors. Since he was in the basement the entire time, he didn't really get to see what really happened. But if we look to the movies where Greg actually got out, it really wasn't bad. All they really did was drink coke and form a conga with Ralph. Probably because it was a kids movie, but there's no way I know what high school parties are like anyways considering the only parties I went to were PS4 parties, which I don't even regret. I had a blast on Overwatch and Black Ops 3. Yeah, the party led to the door getting vandalized, but he replaced the entire thing anyways, so it was fine. And everything else he does are just normal things most teens do. You're listening to your music and your mom starts dancing to it, so you put on headphones. You slept through the whole day, all high schoolers want to do is sleep, plus he's probably growing. He doesn't seem motivated to teach his younger brother the drums. From Greg's perspective, he seems mean, but I get it, I don't want to teach my younger brother anything either. I teach my brother how to fast fall and three days later he forgets what the jump button is. Now, going back to my original statement, if you look back on all these things that make Roderick bad, are they truly bad like how Roderick is made out to be? Not really. Again, these things don't make Roderick a saint, but he's not doing anything terrible here. He isn't harming anyone, from Drake's perspective he seems like a horrendous person, but if you look at the things he does, none of them are really malicious. Manny will break a console and Greg will abuse his friend, but all Roderick really does is mess with his younger brother. It just looks way worse because we're reading this from the POV of Greg. Overall, he just seems like a normal kid in high school. Roderick seems to be social and has friends, and he's also really passionate about drumming. He played for his school talent show, he attracts people to his garage with just his music, he's played for a part-time job, and he wants to be a pro. He isn't the most studious, but he's at least motivated and passionate about something, and even better, it's an instrument. Greg always talks about becoming rich and famous, and I know he's just a kid, but I always wondered how he was gonna actually get there. Roderick doesn't really talk about stuff like that, but I feel like he has a much better chance at the moment considering his goals of being a pro drummer. Now, I'm not saying all of this because I'm trying to convince you that Roderick is a perfect person, but in the books he's really looked down upon by his parents and viewed as an antagonist for Greg. But when you really look at things and compare him to the rest of his family, like Greg and Manny, he's definitely the most normal out of his whole family. Also, he offers Greg his pants for church after his got dirty, meaning he'd go in with no pants so that his brother wouldn't have stained pants. What a legend. Hey guys, thank you to everyone who subbed from the previous video, and if you enjoyed this one, I'd appreciate a sub. Only like 4.9% of my viewers do. But as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like these videos, then don't forget to drop a like, since that's like the only way I know you'd actually like to see more. But with that, I kind of like making these end cards more personal. But at the same time, I don't want it to seem like the video is longer, even though it's just me talking to you guys at the end. I guess sometimes, depending on the video, I'll have these little end card sections to talk to you guys. But I think what I'm gonna do, which I've done in the past, is just give a little summary and a description of the shows I'm watching and games I'm playing and stuff like that. You know, just for fun, and maybe we could talk about them in the comments. But anyways, that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Take it easy.